Mission. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 key changes being made to Persona 3's remake. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. UI Back in the old days, developers couldn't afford to get too crazy and wild with their menus, HUD, and other UI-related assets. This was most likely due to hardware limitations and or lack of proper funds to allocate to just making the UI stylish. And so, many JRPGs went with straightforward designs that kept everything readable, but a tad bland. Well, Atlas is giving Persona 3 the Persona 5 treatment. The blue tones are still being kept in, of course, but now your highlights, HUD, and everything will be as blitzed out as it was in Persona 5 and its enhanced royal version. Been waiting for this! Let's get in there! Don't pull any Voice acting. I decided to call this meeting to introduce him to the rest of the squad. I'll try not to get in anyone's way. Yes, we know that Persona 3 had a plethora of voice acting across both the original version, Portable, and FES. So what's the change? Well, if you weren't keeping up with the news, some of the Persona community was up in arms over the remake having an entirely new voice cast. No Yuri Lowenthal, no Michelle Ruff, no one from the original game is returning. To Atlas's credit, Persona 3 is a near 20 year old game, so everybody does sound different than they did 20 years ago. On top of that, the new cast consists of actors who have had roles in games such as Yakuza Like a Dragon, Octopath Traveler 2, Honkai Star Rail, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Cassette Beasts, and even The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Honestly, you know the performances here will be just as good as the original title. My favorite line that I got to say, definitely, a lot of other people are gonna say the same thing probably, was getting to shout, Persona! 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 Party Commands. <laughs> In case you had never played any of the other Persona games outside of Persona 5, they did not play like most other JRPGs, or even RPGs in general. The only character you ever controlled in battle was your player character, Makoto Yuki. The rest of your party acted on their own accord. This could prove frustrating in some cases, as they could wind up doing the wrong move and put the entire party at risk in dire situations. Granted, they weren't stupid, but there were plenty of times where decisions were made and got the party wiped. The remake will thankfully abandon this design choice and allow you to control everyone in battle just as you could in Persona 5. Action. Boss fights. Another key aspect to seeing an overhaul and reload are the boss fights. In the original iterations, Persona 3's bosses weren't all that different compared to other JRPGs. They were just beefy boys with a ton of HP that could dish out a lot of damage. You just had to hope your party was leveled up enough and could withstand enough attacks without constantly relying on items. Reload is changing this approach and redesigning almost every boss in the game. Expect many to bear gimmicks just as Persona 5's bosses had. Weapon swapping. Shadows can only be defeated by Persona users. It's our job to defeat them. Pretty exciting, huh? Despite bosses being a little more basic than we've come to expect from games today, Persona 3 did have another layer that forced you to strategize a bit more. Like many other RPGs, you would have to give characters equipment, and back then, Persona 3 allowed you to equip whatever to whoever. For Reload, you won't have this much decision making to worry about. Just like the Phantom Thieves, certain weapons and gear will be purchasable, but only certain characters will be able to equip them. Let's do it! <laughs> Music
As expected from a remake, the beautiful and bopping soundtrack of Persona 3 will be getting remixed. At the time of this video, Atlas has not confirmed whether the original tracks will be integrated in some way. However, there will be some new music made for the areas that are getting expanded upon. For instance, Reload will be getting its own battle song much like Persona 5 did with Last Surprise, so expect some new beats you'll want on your playlists. Though we won't be surprised if tracks like The Snow Queen or Maya's Theme get axed as those were remixes of songs from previous games. The Modnad Door Sona! The Monad Door was a tricky section of the game only accessible at a very specific point towards the end of the original game. Some players even whizzed past it without ever knowing of its existence until years later. Atlas must know how big of a problem this was, as they are changing up how the Monad Door works in the remake. Rather than give players only one chance to experience it, it will now be split across multiple sections throughout the campaign. Of course, exploring the Monad depths will remain optional, but if you want the best gear possible, you might want to consider tackling its challenging floors. I summon you! Missing content. So this is the miracle he performed. For as sweet of a package Reload is shaping up to be, there are two omissions that have some fans irked. One feature missing is the option of playing a female protagonist, which was a part of Persona 3 Portable's experience. But the most glaring omission is the answer, which was included in Persona 3 FES. This was an epilogue that focused a lot more on combat and saw players take control of Aegis as she explored a new dungeon, the Abyss of Time. We have a feeling this will either be sold as DLC after launch or saved for an eventual enhanced and expanded version of Reload. Annoying, yes, but we'll see what Atlas does after reload launches. What's it doing? Fatigue. Persona! No! So many of us will swear by Persona 3 until the bitter end. There's just so much to love about this game that it's ridiculous. However, the one mechanic that absolutely nobody liked in this game was fatigue. In case you're unfamiliar, Persona 3 wanted players to swap out party members frequently. To enforce this, Atlas implemented fatigue. Bring a character into too many fights and they will tire out. This could eventually cause a variety of problems for said character, such as decreased accuracy and speed, lower resistance, and lower recovery chances. Think if a D&D character was constantly rolling nat ones. The only way to get a character to recover is to have them sit out from missions for a day or two. And yes, it gets annoying super quick. What does this mean for reload? Well... Nothing! It is gone! It is kaput! No more! It is now X-Fatigue! Veterans rejoice! I need your help! All enemies defeated! Link Episodes! I have won a water pistol! Between this and my onboard firearms, which is more effective in combat against the shadows? Here, let's trade. Another weak point, albeit a minor one, in the original iterations of Persona 3 was the fact that not every party member had social links to evolve and strengthen the party with, mainly Akihiko and Junpei. This time around, almost every character of the main cast will have social links to build upon through the new Link episodes. This way, everyone will get to have their own story shared with the player, and hopefully make things a little less depressing than the main story gets. Plus, you will have plenty of opportunities to hang out with your favorite characters between the dormitory and the outside world. I guess I was wrong. For the first time in my life, I, I realized what I wanted. Some things you only pick up stepping off the straight and narrow. 
What's got you excited about playing Persona 3 Reload? Let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. Fate shall decide which of us will remain. Come then. Did you enjoy this video? Check out some of our other videos here on Mojo Plays, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content every day.